And now, join your hosts, Keith Reynolds and Charlene Chamberlain. Well, good morning and welcome. Uh, I'm Keith Reynolds, the host of Morning Coffee. I'm here with my co-host, Charlene Chamberlain. Char, good morning. You didn't say co-host, show host I today. didn't say it. You know what? <laughs> I, I, I didn't have my coffee, but I had my tea this morning. Uh, so. Was it blueberry? No, it wasn't blueberry. Regular tea? Regular tea. Oh, that's good. Regular tea. You know what happened last time honey. we had that blueberry tea. That yeah, did not work too that well wasn't, with you. And I had blueberry coffee. Remember that time? Yeah, that, that I do. Was, <laughs> never no more blueberry blueberries coffee. for you. <laughs> yeah. I, blueberry's my favorite flavor, I but know. that was not... Blueberry. No. <laughs> so what do we got going on this morning? Our guest is Lucy Beard, and she's the executive director mm -hmm. of the Alice Paul Institute. And she's here to join us this morning and to tell awesome. us all about the Alice Paul Institute. And there's some wonderful events happening there, too, which we'll get to a little bit later. So welcome to Morning Coffee, Thank Lucy. Well, nice to have you Lucy. on. And I've been there, actually, and I love it there. It's a, it's oh, beautiful. my gosh, me too. I was there for a luncheon and a tea, and it mm -hmm. was wonderful. Great. So Great. tell us, who is Alice Paul? Right, who is Alice Paul? Alice Paul was born and raised in Mount Laurel at Paulsdale, her family farm, and she led the final fight for women to get the vote in 1920. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, Ladies, listen to this. <laughs> she led what was considered that we wouldn't today, but back then in 1920, they were considered radical. The mm, radical, very radical wing of the movement. They picketed in front of the White House. They were sent to jail. They went on hunger strike and were force fed, all for the right to vote. And right. what year was this? Uh, 1917 to 1920. Yeah, 17 all to the 20s. Happened. Right. Wow, that yeah. is pretty radical for women to do that. Right. Back then, women were genteel. They stayed at home. They took right. care of children. They did embroidery. Right. Um, that was the expectation. And, yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. They weren't out in the workforce marauding right. around for right. <laughs> rights for women. Demanding. Yeah, right. demanding. Right. Wow. And one, one of the points we always try to get across in talking about Alice Paul and her, they, these were tactics she was using. Mm -hmm. She really was a political and marketing strategist. Today, mm -hmm. I have no doubt she'd be running the internet. Um, well, that's what I was going to ask you. You know, media. if she were here today, yeah. what do you think she'd be doing with right. all of our technology? We, right. We often yeah. ask children that. That's a subject for essay contests mm -hmm. we run, or what kind of tools would she use today right. to do what? What would be the issues she'd be addressing? And the answer is, I mean, they all come up with different answers, but the core answer we want them to understand is she would still be working for gender equality. Mm -hmm. Because after women won the vote in 1920, she went on to write another constitutional amendment called the Equal Rights Amendment, which mm -hmm. still hasn't passed. No. Uh, and it's how many years has right it now. been? <laughs> yes, yeah, it's a long yeah. campaign. It took 75 years for women to get the vote. Mm -hmm. We're already in 75, well, 85 years since we wow. first called for an Equal Rights Amendment to guarantee gender equality mm -hmm. in our Constitution. Wow. So that yeah. who would I, I I didn't even you know right. I didn't even think about that. No, it just goes to show that I, I think for the political arena, how long it takes things right. to get put yeah. through. Yeah, it's a long. I think process. we blame our presidents who are only right. there at the max eight years. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's been there eighty five right. years. So right. he's right. really clogging that thing up. And you exactly. have to think about the you know. people, the inception of it. Those people are no longer with us. So who's going right. to carry that torch right. and carry that on? Right. There is a, a real renewed interest in an equal rights amendment going on right mm -hmm. now, and it's been introduced into the Senate and the House just this past week. Um, so every session it gets introduced, but now it seems to be get building some momentum right. where perhaps it will get committee hearings and we'll get right. some actual votes on it. Well, well you know what? Good. When Hillary gets elected. <laughs> when? You know, no, I'm, I'm telling you right now, so? I'll predict it right now. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. You know what? I, I, have, I don't have my pink tie on it. I know. Is that the predictor tie? That's the predictor tie right here. Hillary Clinton, next president. We have different president. ties for different things on yeah, this show. Yeah, see, Hillary Clinton, next president. Uh, I got my yellow tie It's already. possible. I'm it's, not kidding. We yet. haven't had a woman. So right. I'm, I'm going to vote for it. It's going to happen sometime. I'm going to vote for it because I, I think she. I think she'll do well. Well, if Alice Paul were here today, she would win. <laughs> <laughs> or she, or her candidate. Would win. Right. That's right. Her <laughs> she didn't tend to get out in the front. Instead, she was in the back, right. like, planning everything yeah. and running the strategy. Uh, so she would be running a campaign, that's for mm -hmm. sure, for someone, if not for herself. Right. So she yeah. didn't marry, right? She never married. Right. In fact, she was the oldest of four children, and only one of them ever married, and he only had one son who never married. So when that nephew mm -hmm. of hers died in 1987, the family was gone. 
So what happened to the house then? Did it go well, into the house, disrepair? Um, the house went into private hands. It was sold by the Paul family in 1923. And different people, um, or not sold, I'm sorry, they moved out. And then it was mm -hmm. rented out to people. And then finally when her brother, who ran the farm, died in 1957, it was sold. And the folks who bought it then sold it to us, the Alice Paul Institute. Mm -hmm. um, and we were started by a group of women who wanted to do something in Alice Paul's memory. And it, when the opportunity came to purchase her house, um, they went for it. And That's spent a big the opportunity. Uh, wow. Yes. <laughs> and it was a big mortgage to pay yeah, off, but this sure. group did it. But then decided, rather than making it merely a house museum, they wanted to create a living legacy to yes, Alice Paul. Yes, that's great. So mm -hmm. it was it was created as a center for women's leadership development. Mm -hmm. So today we run all kinds of programs at the house um, exploring leadership and the skills kids need to develop in order to become good leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So that's really how we keep Alice Paul's work of going. Of course. Okay. We're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be back with some more information about mm -hmm. Alice Paul's. <laughs> For independent living for seniors age 62 and over, People Inc. offers safe, maintenance-free apartments across Western New York. The affordable rent is income-based. For more information, call People Inc. Senior Living at 817-9090. Looking for a cooking oil with a light flavor and reduced absorption so food preserves its natural flavor? One with a high smoke point for stir-frying, sauteing, grilling, and baking? Then choose all-natural Pompeian 100% grapeseed oil, imported from France. Grapes have been a key ingredient of the healthy Mediterranean diet for years. Pompeian 100% grapeseed oil is the chef's choice for high heat cooking, grilling, stir-frying, sautéing, or even deep frying. And Pompeian 100% grapeseed oil is great for baking, too, because its delicate taste does not overwhelm the flavor of cakes, cookies, and other favorite recipes. A key traditional ingredient of the Mediterranean, grapeseed oil is a rich source of vitamin E antioxidant and naturally gluten-free. Buy imported Pompeian 100% grapeseed oil today and find great recipes at Pompeian.com. Wait, don't let this happen to you. At Jan Fence, we're family owned and operated for over 50 years, providing a wide choice of fencing. Why wait online at the big box store? Just call Jan Fence. Ask about our Easy Fence to Go products by Active Yards, the first truly do it yourself fence product. At Jan Fence, we always do what we say. Come see us today. Step into an extraordinary world that will excite your senses. Experience our delectable Mughlai cuisine and the magic of tandoori savoir-faire. Let our international award-winning team delight you with a taste of heaven. Enjoy our mouth-watering flavors and our unique flair for excellence. Savor the elegance of fine dining and catering. Chazan Restaurant. Indulge your taste buds. Hi, I'm Dr. Sidney Cohen. I'm a psychologist in New Jersey. I'm the host of a show called Heading in the Right Direction, which will be appearing on internet TV station Radio Vision Network. It's a show that's going to cover a wide range of psychological subjects. I think you'll be very interested in the subjects. Um, I'm also going to have the opportunity to send me emails, ask me some questions. I'll answer questions. And I very much look forward to you tuning in. I'm very excited to do this. Thank you. Today's show has been sponsored by More Than Gifts. Come see our new location in Martha, New Jersey. Not just gifts, but more. Well, welcome back. I'm Keith Reynolds, host of Morning Coffee, here with my co-host Charlene Chamberlain and my yellow predicting tie. <laughs> um, and who do we have here, Char? Can I, can I borrow that for the lottery today? Uh, sure, absolutely. <laughs> uh, we're here with Lucy Beard, and we're talking to her about the Alice Paul Institute. Yeah and mm -hmm. some of the wonderful um, events and things that are happening there. But I think we have some photos. I think we do. Of the home and mm -hmm. the grounds. Right. Yeah, that's the house uh, called Paulsdale, uh, though Alice Paul just called it the home farm. Mm -hmm. uh, that's around 1905. 
And uh, you can see their lawn. We always tell kids here are their lawn mowers, the sheep on the lawn. That's how yeah. they get the grass cut. <laughs> now, how many acres was it on originally? Well, originally the farm was 200 acres. Wow. Um, it stretched from uh, the turnpike in 295 on the south all the way up. At different times, they owned land all the way up to Main Street of Morristown. That's what I was going to say. I thought yeah. it went to at least Route 38, but right. it did go further. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. At, at times they'd sell and mm -hmm. buy and rent it out and all that. And it was a typical South Jersey farm. Mm -hmm. um, peaches, Working pears, farm? plums. Oh, Fruit yeah. farm. Mm -hmm. And really? vegetables. And yeah. vegetables. And hand oh. crops, everything that needed to be picked by hand. Wow. Okay. So in the summer, like many of the farms across South Jersey, there would be pickers. Migrant, mm -hmm. the migrant mm -hmm. laborers. Mm -hmm. would right, right. In. Or folks who worked in factories in Philadelphia in the, the winter. Would that was on the things. back end of the property? Um, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, yeah. So a mile of, of uh, apple, pear, peach, fruit. Wow. Uh, plum trees mm -hmm. and then corn and they were a Campbell's farm they supplied Campbell's tomatoes oh very really cool. yeah I mean it's got enough space there I mean oh, and, yeah. you know what yeah. I mean and I was yeah. thinking right. about where they would because right. there's even a um there's a like a farmhouse or shed behind out right about. right we yeah the footprints of the farm buildings the right. cow barn and the yeah. horse like was a smoke house out there right. any of those probably places. and there was yeah. an ice house which yeah. is still there and um it's dilapidated and mm -hmm. at some point we'll rebuild yeah because you, you when you go in you go up that yes. long driveway and you come around and that's where those yes. buildings are right. it's really cool right mm -hmm. so what does it look like today let's say right in 2001, there you a major nice. renovation of Very the building nice. and restoration. Mm -hmm. So on the outside, it's called a restoration. It's a National Historic Landmark. So as such, we wanted to be true to the Department of Interior standards. Um, right. We have to be. Um, yes. So it, these are the colors, the port, the dimensions, mm -hmm. the porch. Everything is as Alice Paul would remember. And that porch is phenomenal. Yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. Is, you know, we did an event out there. Yeah. And yeah. it was just unbelievable. It holds a lot the of atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. but are the sheep still there? <laughs> no. <laughs> or sheep. Thank you. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> the job's hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to herd sheep. Could be shearing <laughs> them yes. later. <laughs> <laughs> Make some little Alice Paul sweaters or right, something. Right. We go. have groundhogs now. <laughs> We have. I love my brown dogs. <laughs> yeah. They are right. little. I, I love pudgy, pudgy. I have them, and I think they're so adorable. Yeah, yeah. We have know. one. <laughs> well, they're smart. Unfortunately, they're smart. they are. <laughs> yes. Right. Now, Alice Pauls, um, you're telling us a little bit. I want to give the audience an opportunity to, to take a look at her. Yeah, uh, we have a picture, yeah, we have a picture oh, wow. of her. Yeah. Here she is, and this is a publicity shot she oh, did. Oh, boy. Um, and how flag. old is she there, do you know? Well, that would be 1920, so she'd be 35 years old. Yeah. And, and uh, if you look at her, look at the determination. Yeah, I was right. just going to say, say that. I have a, like, I have I'm a vision. I have a vision, <laughs> you know what I mean? This is on Women's Equality Day, August 26, 1920, when the 19th Amendment was passed. Mm -hmm. okay. And most of them packed their bags and went home. They said, oh, we've won. The war's over. And for her, this was just the first battle. Yeah. She said, the right. vote is just the first step right. toward true equality for everyone. Um, now we have to get guarantees in the Constitution mm -hmm. around equality. Okay. Uh, so she kept fighting. <laughs> very cool. Amazing very cool. Woman. Yeah. That is yeah, amazing. Mm -hmm. you know, especially in that time because... You know, you really, you then. really right. fell on that there for right. the years. Yeah. I mean, you really did right. like that. Right. You know, so yeah. And then, and she worked for the next fifty-seven years. She lived for fifty-seven yeah. years after suffrage That's passed. Mm -hmm. So the stories that are out there, the what little is known about her, really focuses only on the voting mm -hmm. uh, rights campaign. But she went on for fifty-seven wow. years to work so, for international. How uh, old was she? Yeah, I was just going to say, how old was she? She lived she to be ninety-two. Wow. Oh my yeah, God. She was ninety-two. Yeah. And really? she was uh, campaigning from a wheelchair in the nursing home oh my uh, for gosh. the ERA. I People it. tell great stories about visiting her in the nursing home where she literally would ask them, where are you from? And then she would tell them who their congressman was. Mm -hmm. And she knew every district by heart. And she would explain what that congressman's voting Mission record was, on the yeah. ERA was. And how this person never got out of her room without promising to call the congressman. Oh my right. gosh, again, wow. Uh, so now let me ask you this question. Brother that she, that she had a brother. She had two brothers and one sister. Younger or older? Uh, she was the oldest. She was the oldest. Yes. So yeah. she was 92, so they were still mm -hmm. alive. No, she outlived all of them. Uh, some oh of them my died God. young of, from illness. Right. Uh, but yeah, she was all alone at the end. It was a, She had sort of a sad ending. Was she um, local? 
When she well, passed away? Well, um, yes, for the last year and a half. She was actually in a nursing home in Connecticut okay. um, three, in 1975 and was destitute. Her nephew had mismanaged yeah, her destitute. funds and she was left with nothing. Oh, okay. And a group of people, it's a very long story, but people right. who she'd helped to rescue during the Holocaust found out about it. And, um, rescued bought, her a little? And mm-hmm. rescued her, exactly. They raised money and brought her back to Moorestown and she died less than a mile from her home in Paulsdale, um, in a Greenleaf nursing home. Oh, sure, I've been to Greenleaf been right. there many times. That's where she was the last yeah. year and a half of her life. Yes. And there are great stories of people going in to visit her, and mm-hmm. she'd have a big ERA blanket over her lap, Aww. and she'd grill them about the need for the Equal Rights <laughs> Amendment. <laughs> That's so. cool. Well, we're going to take one more commercial break, and we'll be back. And we, when we come back, we want to talk about some events that go on yes. at uh, mm-hmm. the at Paulsdale. Prop- Paulsdale. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In a world where bankers have lost all interest, where robots and fat cats rule our fortunes, one woman Hi. will stand up and strive to do the impossible. Be treated like a person. Friends and neighbors will join her quest. Ordinary people will band together against the forces of corporate greed. And together, they will form Philadelphia Federal Credit Union, already in a neighborhood near you. Imagine the finest hand-selected USDA prime steak you'll ever have. The freshest line-caught seafood. Our Wine Spectator award-winning wine list and soul-satisfying desserts. Bring that together with the perfect date. The winning business deal. A memorable family celebration. Welcome to Rod Steak and Seafood Grill in nearby Morristown, New Jersey. Bring your appetite and feed your passion. Your credit score is yours, and at Experian Credit Expert, we want to help you really use it. With access to helpful Experian experts over the phone and online, we can help you use it to get a better idea of what info the banks have on you. Use it to get more choice of mortgages. Use it to make your money go further. Take the next step to improving your financial future with your free 30-day trial at experian.co.uk. Freppy's Tex-Mex, you can definitely taste the freshness in our food. You should definitely come to Freppy's because it's a great place. You can bring your family, very kid-friendly. All my servers are amazing, friendly people. Everyone here is just happy to serve and, and I think it shows. The thing that sets us apart is the quality and freshness of our food. And I think once you try it, you'd be coming back. I'm Joe Desario, co-owner of Freppy's Tex-Mex in Plainfield, New Jersey. Hi, I'm Stephanie Milan, host of Read All About It. I interview authors of all kinds about their journeys of writing and the struggles that they face. You can watch my show at 12 p.m. on Wednesdays. Tune in to Radio Vision Networks. We hope to see you then. Today's show has been sponsored by Farmers Insurance in Voorhees, New Jersey. To protect your assets and the people you love, call Mike Skoranek, your local Farmers Insurance agent, at 856-336-2553. We are farmers. Bum, ba, dum, bum, 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 bum. And we're back. I'm Keith Reynolds, host of Morning Coffee, here with my co-host, Charlene Chamberlain. <laughs> He looks at me when he says that, right? Because I, I almost said show host goes. <laughs> See, you, you jinx me. You jinx me. Um, and we're learning about Alice Pauls. Um, <laughs> leave my title. Yeah, we're uh, here with Lucy Beer from yeah, the Alice Paul yep. Institute. Mm-hmm. And, and I know that you have some wonderful events happening there. But before we jump into the events, um, let's talk about what happens when you arrive at the Alice Paul Institute. Are there docent <laughs> tours that right, you can take right. the property? We do have... Um, Tours were open uh, the second Saturday of every month for walk-around tours with mm-hmm. a docent. 
But in the next few months, we'll be installing a full exhibit about Alice Paul and her life and work and the nice. Equal Rights Amendment and the suffrage campaign so that people can come by whenever we're open. Uh, we're fully staffed. Okay. We're there Monday through Friday. But this new exhibit, it's called In Pursuit of Ordinary Equality, will really tell the story mm -hmm. of Alice Paul right. um, from beginning to end. And, and it, let people do it at their own pace to see, nice. see it. Yeah. Now, um, in the home, is it restored to how it would have been right, when she lived right. there? Do you have some of the furnishings? Um, she, we have one bookcase uh, one that bookcase, belonged to her um, because she, the last few years of her life, she was so dedicated to the cause. She never owned a house. She mm -hmm. lived in party headquarters of her organization. So she didn't carry things right. around with her much. Yeah, it was harder um, back then, too. Right, right. But yeah. we have one bookcase that we've restored that belonged to nice. her. And that's a great piece of furniture to have mm -hmm. because she uh, loved uh, reading. Yes. You know. mm -hmm. So we, it's a great opportunity to talk to kids about her love of reading and, mm -hmm. um, and what she did for entertainment. Um, and then we have lots of family photos and mm -hmm. things like that decorating the house. We have all of her college degrees as well. Oh, and that's, that's also a great teachable yeah. moment with kids because she loved academics she loved learning and mm -hmm. she had six college degrees so six college yes. degrees yeah yeah she wow. had a, a doctorate in law so she went to law school to really learn nice. the law and uh, those are all hanging on the wall at Paulsdale her degrees That's but you amazing. know the, the, the house the, the you know the doorways are right. big I know. doorways yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah. it was a it's grand home yeah. at yeah, one time it was, right. it was beautiful yes. right. we didn't restore the interior to be a family farmhouse instead we got it up to code so that we could have school children there for our mm -hmm. meeting Alice field trip uh, so that we could have workshops with our yes. girls' advisory council. Mm -hmm. Just last night, we had 35 high school girls in the building nice. uh, for the girls' advisory council mm -hmm. monthly meeting, learning about women throughout history and identifying different characteristics in those women's personality that are the same in their own personality, yeah. so that they begin to connect themselves sure. to the idea of being leaders mm -hmm. and see what they have in common with women who have been successful leaders. Right. Cool. cool. That's great. Yeah. And now there's some events you guys yes. are doing. Yes, wonderful mm -hmm. events coming right. up. We do a lot of public programming throughout the year, not just for children, right. but for adults. And some of our biggest events of the year are coming up over the summer. On Sunday, August 23rd, we'll host Women Rock the 19th Amendment. Mm -hmm. It's a celebration of what would now be uh, 85 years of women having the vote. Or 95 years, I'm sorry, wow. I need to get my math. Um, we're coming up on the 100th anniversary, so each year we're building this outdoor concert, Women Rock, right. into a, a bigger and bigger event. We that just started like it last year. So we'll, that'll feature local artists and artisans selling crafts mm -hmm. and art, artwork, and then musicians on the stage, on the, the porch. The is porch. Our that's yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. That's so wonderful. that's an outdoor concert on Sunday, August 23rd. And then on Saturday, September 26th, we have our annual Paulsdale Uncorked. It's a wine tasting mm -hmm. featuring wines from local distributors and, and wine stores. And then food provided by Capital Grill of oh, Cherry Hill. Love Capital Grill. Right. Hey, oh, <laughs> Who does a great restaurant. And then we have personal chefs from the local chapter of the U.S. Personal Chefs Association. And they're all creating foods as mm -hmm. well. So it's a great evening out. And that's now, also out on the Is lawn. that just for women or is it for That's everybody? for everybody. everybody. We have a lot Every of men at our wine tasting. <laughs> so it's a popular <laughs> event. Um, I think you're going to have one more. Yeah, <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. It's a lot of fun. That sounds like a lot of fun. And all the funds we raise through that. Uh, those two events go toward our programs and preserving the property mm -hmm. and keeping it maintained. Okay. Yeah, I know being a nonprofit and having so much property, a home and all the ground must really be very costly. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It takes a lot to keep up a six and a mm -hmm. half acre property. Yeah, who cuts so. that long? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Jeez. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big job and it's weekly at this time mm -hmm. of year. And so. the sheep yeah. aren't there. So. Right. Right. Yeah. No yeah. sheep, but the ground no do their part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know what? Because you know, I live in Mount Laurel, yeah. and when this time of year, if it even gets a little humid, the grass right. grows. Oh, you know, yeah. it's knee Just yeah, right. I mean, it's like boom. Like where the heck you have to mow it every week? It's exactly. Insane. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so Lucy, tell our listeners out there and viewers uh, where they can find you and, and sure. where yeah. actually Alice Paul is located. Right. Well, Paulsdale, Alice Paul's Paul Institute Paulsdale. is located at Paulsdale. That's the name of the building, and it's on Hooton Road in Mount Laurel, one of the oldest roads in Mount Laurel. Mm -hmm. Yup. And we're on the web at www.alicepaul.org. 
Okay. And our phone number is 856-231-1885. That's the year she was born. So that's that that's right. great. That's right. Did you plan that? <laughs> yes. yes uh, actually, did. our production guy remembered that. This <laughs> okay. That's good. It works. So, uh, yes, it does. So I want to thank you uh, for coming on the morning coffee. Oh, it was thanks wonderful for having, having thank you. Thank um, you. And educating us on, uh, on House Paul. Paul's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, that's good. It's yeah. really good. Thanks a lot. All right, we'll be back with our next guest right after these uh, commercial or commercial break. Okay. <laughs>